talking to you from Nashville, Tennessee, the home of the Grand Ole Opry, the greatest country music show in the world. You'll enjoy Grand Ole Opry stars like Ernest Tubb, Webb Pierce, Jimmy Dickens, Rod Brashfield, Minnie Pearl, and yours truly, Carl Smith, and a host of us. But right now, here is Ernest Tubb. Turn the jukebox low and let me sit and reminisce while I pretend that she is sitting here with me the way she did not long ago. We used to paint the town red and dance until two. Well, I don't paint it red no more, but I'm painting it blue. He stole her love, I know, but he can't stop me, Joe, from having just a dream or two. Oh, Billy Bird. There's a memory in the room A memory that walks A memory that talks And haunts me everywhere I go I'm just a fool who loves her And will till I die From the very first hello Till the last goodbye And this is it so fill two glasses, Joe, then leave me here alone to cry. Thank you. How about a great big rousing welcome for Grandpa Jones? Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, Ernie, to look at him, you wouldn't think he is one of the finest English students in the country, but... I used to live down where he is at, and his teacher was so proud of him that every time that, that uh, somebody would come in to, 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 to visit the school, why, he'd, they'd get his class up in front of the little school and start asking them questions. Well, I went over there one day, and I sat down in the back of the school there, and, of course, the teacher got his class up right away and started asking them English questions. Come to Ernest, said, Ernest, get up there and tell us the difference between prose and poetry. Well. Ernest didn't know, and it sort of embarrassed the teacher. And she says, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll write some, on the board, I'll write some prose, and then I'll write some poetry. So she wrote, there was an old woman that lived on a hill, and last week she moved to town. She says, that's prose, because it doesn't rhyme. And then she wrote, there was an old woman lived on a hill, and if she's not dead, she's a living there still. She says, that's poetry, because it does rhyme. Ernest says, I understand that all right. So the next morning, she thought she'd <laughs> catch him on it. She says, Ernest, get up there and tell us the difference between prose and poetry this morning. Ernest jumped up and he said, there was an old woman that lived by the well, and when she died, she went to what do you want, prose or poetry? <laughs>
the neighbors right now, we have a couple of my favorite funny people. Cousin Minnie Pearl and Rob Brassfield. Right now, though, first, here she is, Cousin Minnie Pearl. <laughs> proud to be here. Well, Sir Ernest, you know, this year parking problem is just getting awful. It's simply terrible, I can't hardly get years. nobody to park with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just fooling, Ernest, you know. Oh, I went down here to one of these here department stores. I was going to do a little trading. Yeah. And while I was standing down there, uh -huh. there was the handsomest, the cutest, the uh -huh. smartest, most adorable Floor walker come up to me, and he says, "How do you mean it?" Oh, oh. Rodley, are you handsome? Uh, huh? Are you handsome? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't see it, Rodney. Hey, listen, Rodney, are you coming over to the box supper we're gonna have tomorrow at Grinder Switch tomorrow night? Manny, I ain't a coming. Now wait, Rodney. By then, I ain't a coming. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, Rodney. No. You, you, you're not supposed to say I ain't coming. That ain't right. See, it's, I am not coming, you are not coming, we are not coming, they are not coming. Looks to me like you ain't gonna have much of a box up <laughs> 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 We're all <laughs> <laughs> right, we're gonna, <laughs> you know, that's Any where dog. all the girls, uh, they uh, fix the supper, see, and they put you in a box, and the boys yeah. bet out. You know, yeah, they get their boxes, uh, yeah, and they eat them together, see. Yeah. Oh, I've got some wonderful food already. I'm going to have apple flip-overs. Yeah? Uh, flip-overs? <laughs> yeah. Now, wait a minute, Minnie. You mean turnovers, <laughs> not slip-overs. No, they're apple flip-overs. You see, the apples was next door, and brother had to slip over and get them. <laughs> That makes me so mad I could eat one. Right? <laughs> Rodney, I tell you, though, that brother of mine is a smart boy. He is? That runs in our family. Yeah? Like uh, buck teeth, and, uh, you know, we can all bite a pumpkin through a railing fence. Rodney, listen, uh, you know what Rodney, what brother has did recently? What has brother did? <laughs> <laughs> he has, he has, I want you to come go down there and look at it, what, he, what he's got down there. Rodney. What's he got, me? He has crossed a goat with an owl. You know what he got? Great gobs of goose eggs. What did he get? <laughs> what did he get? <laughs> he crossed the aisle with a goat and got a hoop nanny. Hoop nanny. Neighbors, right now, I think we ought to have a little square dancing, so let's all join our grand old office square dancing. Kind of shake legs out here. Right now, neighbors, we have some wonderful folks back here we want you to meet. Some people I know you're going to enjoy just a whole lot. So let's give them a great big welcome, the one and only, the Carter family. Okay, Ernest, we'd like to do one called Hearts of Stone.
take great pleasure in introducing this next young fellow here. In fact, uh, he's the founder of our grand old Opry, and we all love him very much. I want you to give him a great big welcome. It's his honor, the solemn old judge, George D. Hayes. Hey, hey, hey. Hello, friends. We are here today to put on a little shindig. The Grand Ole Opry is uh, about the world's biggest neighborhood show. We're devoted entirely to the homespun type of music and entertainment. We've been on the air almost 30 years as a regular weekly feature. Let's all have a lot of fun today now. You know, this show is uh, uh, devoted entirely to uh, you take part and we take part. So let's, let's get everything started. If the children are ready, are you ready, children? Yeah! yeah. Let her go! That's it! Hey. Well, neighbors, right now we have a fellow back here that we're proud to have on the show with us. A young man that's one of the real sincere and authentic country singers of the nation today. People love him all over the country, so right now, how about a great big welcome for the old boy from Kentucky, Bill Monroe. Yeah. All the bluegrass boys to help me out here, we have a hymn for the folks tonight entitled A Voice from On High. Just a lot there, Bill Monroe and all the bluegrass boys. Very beautiful fellows. Now, neighbors, turning from the serious side to the unserious side, and I can't think of any better way to get unserious than to introduce this next boy back here. Hails from down in Hornwall, Tennessee, the one and only Rod Brassfield. <laughs> I never it's good to see you, but you know it's cold outside, baby. Well, you're dressed for it. Yeah, like by <laughs> net, I'm telling you, I've been hunting. Ernest, do you know what the farmer said when he run over his old cow? No, Rod, I sure said, don't have oh, any idea. Oh, look at that Jersey bounce. Oh. <laughs> Boy, I've uh, got me a gun here that shoots I so far. I thought at first you was supposed to come out here and shoot me for no, that song. Well, no, no, <laughs> this your gun shoots so far, you've got to put salt in the in the shells to keep the meat till you get there. Oh. <laughs> That's a good one, buddy. We had it out there in horse pasture yesterday, and me and a bunch of us shooting at the bullseye. Yeah. And I won. You did. Yeah, I hit the bullseye. I'll Been good, too, but I had to pay Paul for the bull. Oh. <laughs> yeah, pay that's fun. I run into two other fellas a while ago, and we all went hunting together. Yeah. Uh, one of them stuttered when he talked. He just could, 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 couldn't hardly <laughs> say nothing, you know? <laughs> and the other fella had sank by this thing. He just no. shaking all over. 
Well, sir, we was walking down through there. All of a sudden, this, this young fella that started said, well, well, wait a minute. Now, why did there's a rabbit? <laughs> he threw it up and shot, and that old cottontail just took off around the bed, boy's hip pockets just dipping sand, you know? <laughs> and went a little further, went a little bit further. Ernest, this feller, this, uh, this other feller that had the saint by the stain says, wait a minute, boys, yonder's yeah. a bird I want, see? <laughs> threw this gun up, and he let him have it, see? That old bird fell just dead as a doorknob. Well, I'll see. This guy stuttered and said, well, well, well no, no, no wonder you hit him. Yeah, you, you aimed all over the tree. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you. Right? Hey, I'm going to watch Maybe right now I want you to give a great big welcome to my special girlfriend from down to Grinder Switch, Tennessee. We call her our little gal reporter, and here she is, Cousin Minnie Pearl. <laughs> Yeah. I say, um, haven't I saw your face somewhere before? Well, if you've seen it, you've seen it somewhere before because I never wear it behind, young lady. Oh. <laughs> that is too funny, funny. <laughs> I was just fooling you, Ernest. You know I know I you. I thought you knew me, Ernest. <laughs> Yes, but you know, I would have spoke to you before. Yeah. But I'm so bad. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I'm so shy, you know. I'm just in my early 20s, and all girls in their early 20s are shy. Yeah. I'll agree with you. You're shy, honey. You're shy about 15 years. Oh. I <laughs> oh. Really, I, listen, I was just kidding you there, honey, but... Uh, uh, getting down serious now, is it true what I've heard about you, that you like to be kissed by a man? Oh, Ernest, I, I, what are you talking I, about? Well, well, me, I, I heard it, Oh, really. why, that's the silliest thing I've heard of. <laughs> of course, you know that the only men that I ever allowed to kiss me uh -huh. are Uncle Nabob uh -huh. and brother, brother and an old friend. Oh, is that so? Yes, that's right. Old friend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, oh, listen, let's don't leave each other with all this foolishness now. Let's just, before I go, I want to say something to you. Okay. I, I always did uh, love to hear you sing, and I think you have an awfully good voice. Well, thank you just a whole lot, Minnie, and I just wish I could say the same about you, honey. Well, you could if you told as big a lie as I did. Oh, <laughs> Thank you a lot there, Cousin Minnie Pearl. I'm telling you, you never know about that gal, but she's one of our favorite entertainers, and I know you enjoyed her just a whole lot, neighbors. Here's a little man, too, I know you're going to enjoy. Uh, he hails from the great state of West Virginia. He may be little, but boy, is he loud. So right now, how about a great big hand for my good little buddy, Jimmy Dickens. <laughs> You big tall booger, you. <laughs> Boy, he's a tall one, ain't he? That Ernest Tubbs so tall, if he used to fall down, he'd be halfway home before he could get up. Oh, I never seen him. <laughs> Thank you, Ernest. It's always an added pleasure to be on Mr. Tubbs' show. I'm awfully proud that he asked me to come over to visit with you folks for this time. I, I got a song down home in the hills of West Virginia. Where I come from, there's a little legend among our mountain folk, and it's about a feller that drove steel on the railroads down there. And the man's name was John Henry, and the story goes like this here. John Henry was a steel driver. <laughs> This hammer be the death of me, Lord, Lord. This hammer be the death of me. Now that's the only thing.
I can tell you from the south by the big smile on your mouth. Mississippi gal, I love you. And when I hear you call, come on and hear you all. Mississippi gal, I love you. Now pick a cottage built for two, way down south where dreams come true. Many in that southern dial drives me crazy all the while, and I'd walk a million miles for a great big southern smile. Mississippi gal, I love you. Remember some fine day, I'll be heading back your way. Mississippi gal, I love you. And when I hear you call, come on and hear you all. Mississippi gal, I love you. Now if you make up your mind today, I'd give my life that ain't hate. I'm so tired of roaming round with a gal like you. I'd settle down and I'd walk a million miles for a great big southern smile. Mississippi gal, I love you. Thank you. You know, there are a lot of good guitar pickers all over this wonderful country of ours, but we think we have just about the greatest. In fact, we always refer to him as Mr. Guitar himself, Chet a catfish swimming in the sea. I could have went along and been that to me, then I'd move, then I'd move, then I'd move to Kansas City, honey, baby, where well, they don't want you. Now they call me pretty papa, worst guy in town. The women's all crazy about me, but my good gal turned me down. She done moved, she done moved. He done moved to Kansas City, honey, baby, well, they don't want you. Oh, Billy Bird now. Well, they don't want you. Now, 
I fool around in Nashville as blue as I can be. Looking for that blonde that made a chap out of me. She done move. She done move. She done move to Kansas City, honey. Baby, well, they don't want you. so much, neighbors, and a great big welcome to our country show. We hope that all you folks out there are feeling real good wherever you may be, because we're all feeling real good here on the country show. Have a lot of fine entertainers to introduce to you. So without further ado, let's introduce one of the boys that's a favorite with everybody, every place. A wonderful fellow and a wonderful singer that we're so proud to have with us. Here he is right now, Jim Reeves. <laughs> an opportunity to come to the country show barn. I represent the I Will Cheatham Company. Never heard of them. You never heard of no, anything it don't look like to me. I'm selling Dr. Killam. <laughs> you look like a dollar Dr. Killam quick die easy tonic. I'm going to give away two or three hundred dollars worth of merchandise hey, right here on the street corner and... Hey, Pop. What's this? I ain't your pop boy. My mother never had any children. <laughs> Tonic is what I'm selling. It's the eighth wonder of the world. It'll cure coughs, colds, and rheumatisms, cuts, sprains, bruises, and burns. Instant relief for those tired, so aching feet, cones, and bunions. Softens leather, makes the teeth pearly white, dye your hair three different colors, and takes the grease spots out of your clothes. In three to nine days, it'll make your hair come out and stay out. Yes, sir, yours. I'm going to say it one time and one time only. It'll grow hair, fur, feathers. Did you hear me? I said hair, fur, feathers. On a cute old freak mat, doorknobs, all smooth surfaces and bald spots. Removes all warts, freckles, molds, and skin blemishes, purifies the complexion, and doubles the length of the life. Now, before I pass out the merchandise that I'm going to give each and every one of you that buys the Dr. Killam Quick Size Tonic, I'd like to know if there's anybody in my audience that has ever used a bottle of Dr. Killam Quick Size. Yeah, I have. You have? Yeah, I have. Ladies and gentlemen, you are in luck today. We have a living testimonial to Dr. Killam Quick Size Tonic. I'm going over and talk to this gentleman over. You say you have used a bottle of the tonic? Yes, sir. I'm so happy to hear from you. We have these satisfied customers all over the world. I want you to know that... <laughs> Customers and shoes are killing me. <laughs> Miss Kitty Wells. Kisses left me breathless. 
is right now, Marty Robbins. <laughs> Welcome asking me, and don't forget to join us for our next jamboree. Oh, 